Tim Swartz. I'm Blake Suniga, and we are so glad you've joined us tonight. So Minnesota will get the first possession. Every team wants three-point shooters. Who do you think are the best the league has to offer? I'm taking Allie Quigley, a career 40% three-point shooter, and what a pretty shot she has. Plus, who can forget when she beat Chris Paul in that TV horse competition? That was pretty sweet. Yeah, that was fun to watch. I'm going with an up-and-comer, Victoria Vivians. During her rookie year in 2018, she shot just about 40% from deep, and she's just getting started. Here's Turner. Shot clock at six. And that one drops for her. Good find by Griner. She's so much taller than everybody at 6'9". It allows her really to see the rest of the court. Pass to Dangerfield. And here is Fouls. She's guarded by Griner. Out to the wing. Stolen by Diggins Smith. Here we go, one on one. And a foul on the shot. She'll go to the stripe for two. It's going to go on aerial powers. When Nurse gets going to the hoop, sometimes the D has to foul. Great handles, and she has such a solid frame. Well, guys, Kia Nurse is one of many WNBA players who have gone overseas during the league's offseason. Nurse has played in Australia, where she won back-to-back -back championships and an MVP award. I can only imagine what that's done for her development as a basketball player. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The first one falls. And Tim, we've seen Kia Nurse win a championship in high school, college, and overseas. But do you think she can eventually win one in the WNBA? Absolutely, Blake. You know, she's got that it factor. She's still young, has a lot of room to grow. But Kia's earned the trust of her teammates and coaches. And that's critical in a player's quest for a championship. Plus, I think she's motivated by her previous success to also get it done at the WNBA level. Here's Dangerfield. Shots good by Fouls. This is why Fouls shoots such a high percentage. She picks smart shots to take close to the basket. Now here's Diggins Smith. Pass to Nurse. Here's Turner. She's guarded by Dantas. Now here's Tarasi. Defense is right there. Turner with the bucket. As deadly passing as shooting. Tarasi a dual threat in the pick and roll. Outside Powers. Now here's McBride. Back to Powers. Pass to Dantas. Got a piece of it. A fast break now for the Mercury. From deep, Skyler against Smith. Minnesota grabs the miss. And here's Dangerfield. Excellent D there from Skyler Diggins Smith. So at the end of one quarter of play, still a close game. It's the Mercury up by two. And don't go away as we'll be back with the action for the start of the second quarter in just a bit. Closely contested game here at the start of the second quarter. And what do you guys think about the Mercury here in this one? A lot of trips to the line for them through the first very aggressive offensive move. And they're making full use of their home court advantage, I'll tell you that much. Fans have really helped them. Now Petty. Pass to Griner. Nurse outside. Now Petty. Just five on the clock. Here's Greiner. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. It's going to be on Sylvia Fowles. Well, when you think of the WNBA and really the past and present, it's hard to find a player who can have a bigger impact on a game than Brittany Griner. She's won multiple MVPs, multiple defensive players of the year, and multiple scoring titles. Oh, take a break. Take a break. 
Two shots. And the first one falls for her. It's such a treat to watch Brittany Griner go to work defensively, guys. She has multiple Defensive Player of the Year awards and has led the league in blocks a number of times. Talk about an intimidating defensive presence. He's perfect from the line this time. And as much work as Griner does defensively, Tim, her offensive game is still elite in its own right. Oh, facts only, Blake, facts only. Her combination of strength and length poses a, a lot of problems for opposing defenses, and she's got great touch, too. Griner's assortment of moves is just filthy. Hard to get that shot off with the size difference there. That makes it a tough individual matchup for her, especially down low in the post. That's a big challenge she's taken on. Going in there with the bigs, great job. Now here's Nurse. Second chance shot. And there's a nice layup by Griner. Well, that might be the last player in this league you want to get an offensive board. At 6'9", Griner can get the ball back up and in real quick. Here's Bantam. Pass to Shepard. Nick Ride. Outside of Chanwa. Bantam. Here's Fouls. Oh. So the whistle blows on the shot. Two free throws for the contact there. Over her first decade in the league, Sylvia Fowles has always been a force. Named to three WNBA All-Star games, she's also averaged a double-double four times over a season. But in 2017, Fowles took her game to another level, winning her first MVP award. And the first one drops. You know what they say, hard work pays off, and Fowles is a living example of that. She became a WNBA MVP about a decade after she entered the league. And she makes both free throws. And so here's Phoenix. And here in the second with about a minute and a half gone by. Here's Diggin Smith. Oh, and that one had the right spin on it. It's good. With the pace and the quickness that Diggin Smith plays with, the mid-range is a great shot. Defenders are forced to play on their back heels against her. Pass to fouls. Count it. Phoenix leading. And here's Tarasi. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for her. Outside, Diggin Smith. Fires the three. And the three ball is good. Yeah, Diggin Smith showing supreme focus here, not letting anything interfere with the three point shot. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that has been very close so far. It's the Mercury. They lead by five. And we'll see you right after halftime for the beginning of the third quarter. been a back and forth game with no ground given through the first half. Third quarter getting started here. Without question, fouls displaying her skills today. 
even with a significant amount of extra defensive attention on her, she managed to have a sensational first half. It's amazing what she can do. But for her, it's really nothing out of the ordinary because we don't expect anything less. And I would bet she has even more in store for us during the stretch run. Well, both sides have assessed what they need to do over the break, and we'll see if one can pull away in the third. Diana Taurasi on the wing. That one goes in. Some big news this offseason was the new groundbreaking collective bargaining agreement the WNBA and WNBPA agreed to. What about it stands out to you guys the most? I'll go simple, Blake. It's the increase in pay and benefits. I think that is so important for these players at every single level, at every single pay grade. WNBA players have long been underpaid. So it's great to see this new CBA address that issue. I like how the new CBA includes enhanced travel standards, expanded career development opportunities, as well as progressive family planning benefits. It also adds the WNBA Change Makers platform, which will help enhance player experience and drive business transformation. Here's Dangerfield. Pass to McBride. Back to Fowles. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. When executed correctly, the pick and roll can be so effective. Fowles understands that because she's a student of the game. Now here's Diggin Smith. He's got five. And the shot goes in. Well, she shot the ball extremely well, as you'd expect. You know, like we say, she's been making music all day long. Here's Dantas. Wyatt so far offensively searching for her first points of the game. Pass to Dangerfield. Clock at six. Fouls with it. Dangerfield. And the three off target. And we've watched three so far in this one. It's the Mercury. They lead by nine. We'll be right back to the action when we return. The fourth quarter just moments away now as we welcome you back. Minnesota trailing. Right outside. Pass to Bantam. Down to five on the shot clock. Chanwa. From outside, off the mark. Here's Petty. Here's Cunningham. Petty. Inside. Griner inside. Defended by Achanwa. Count it. Because of Griner's remarkable size and strength, she creates a mismatch against almost every defender. Here's Bantam. And we played through about a minute here in the fourth. That one goes. Count it. Perfect screen there. Set her up with a terrific look. Yeah, but that's a bad job by the defender to not fight through that screen to contest. You want to see more effort there. Now here's Tarasi. Pass to Petty. There's the three. They grab their own miss. Here's Greiner. The third shot of the possession finally falls for them. And that's going to be the nail in the coffin. I'd say so. They've done a great job of closing this one out, never backing off, even with the big lead. Here's Bantam. Puts up a three. It's hauled in by Tarasi. We've got a nine-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. 
She gets that one. Terrific run to put this ball game away. And now let's see just how much longer they keep that foot on the accelerator. They've got to keep it on the accelerator to the finish line. Here's Bannum. No good on the triple. Rossi with it. And so it's Phoenix easily grabbing this one. Even early on in this one, it seemed like they were happy to be playing at home tonight. It makes a big difference. Uh, once they started to really play in a good flow, you felt like uh, they never had any doubts that they'd come out on top. And that'll wrap it up.